Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time, I'm going to look at a very interesting development in video editing, which is a launch of the free video editor Avid Media Composer first. Now, as you may know, Avid Media Composer is the most popular professional video editor. It's used to cut all kinds of TV shows and films, things like Star Wars The Force Awakens and Wonder Woman and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, that was a good film. All of those and more were cut using Avid. And so the fact there's now a free version of Avid is certainly worthy of our attention. To download Avid Media Composer first, you need to go to this web page and click on Get It Now for Free. It's then a four-step process to get the program, the first of which is to get yourself an Avid account. And once you've done that and it's been verified by email and activated, you'll end up eventually on this download page. And here you'll discover there are two possible downloads, one for Mac, 1.6 gigabytes, one for PC, 1.99 gigabytes. And once you've downloaded the file, obviously it'll take a little while, but it's a basic unzip and a basic install to get the program on your computer. So, here we are in Avid Media Composer first. And the first thing to say is this is very similar to the paid version of Avid Media Composer. You get the same interface, you just get a few things uh, in terms of limitations. Now, I should mention a few things about system requirements before we move on. This will run on a Mac or it'll run on a PC under Windows 7, Windows 8.1 or Windows 10, but you will need a 64-bit version of the operating system and you will need at least six gigabytes of RAM. You couldn't have that without a 64-bit version of the operating system, let's be honest. And ideally, you'll want eight gigabytes of RAM. Now, Avid like their software to run on what they call an Avid qualified system, which basically means a set of hardware which has been approved by an Avid engineer, and it'll be a fairly high spec piece of hardware. But I wanted to try this out on a lower spec machine. So what we're doing here is I'm running this on my uh, i7, which I built back in uh, December, about, about six months ago. This is a 2.8 gigahertz i7 with eight gigabytes of RAM. Okay, you're saying that's not a low spec machine, but it doesn't have a graphics card. It's running onboard graphics, Intel HD 530 graphics. And it's good to see that Avid will run up and run nice and smoothly using internal graphics. So if you want to load this software onto a typical laptop or, or many different types of PC, it should work okay without having a full graphics card. And as you'll see, if I just skip through the timeline, this is, you know, that the um, scratching through is very responsive. So there's no problem at all with the fact that this thing hasn't got a, a graphics card, at least on, on a fairly basic edit like the one I've got here. What you're seeing here is just basically a setup of my uh, channel trailer, which I've recreated in Avid. If I just play it. Welcome to the Explaining Computers. Very strange, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to myself, talking to myself. It's weird, yes, there we are. But it, it works as you can see. And what we've basically got here is an, a video editor, you can see that. We've got various windows at the top. We've got the composer window, which has got the two monitors, the uh, source monitor and what they call the record monitor in Avid, Avid the effect of a timeline monitor with their own controls, as you can see. So we can pick up in the source monitor different clips and then we can uh, skip through them and work out how we're going to use them in, in our sequence. That'll work perfectly well. Got the uh, intro there and that's very, very exciting. And we obviously got the timeline down here with all our different clips in it. I should note that in the timeline, you are limited to having four video tracks and eight audio tracks in the Avid Media Composer first. And before you think that's double the number of audio tracks, it isn't because it will add two audio tracks for one video track for stereo. So effectively, it's four tracks of audio and video you can use in Avid Media Composer first, but that's not a major constraint. Over here, we've got the project window. This shows us the different bins where we've got our clips and sequences, and those clips and sequences are down here, uh, as you'll see in this window down there. And we've got a uh, tag there for settings. There's not too many things you can alter in uh, Avid Media Composer first, that's probably not surprising, but you have got this great selection of uh, filters, all sorts of things available for us, for us here, and we've got loads of transitions, as you would expect. So all the basic things you'd want in the video editor are here in Avid Media Composer first. Right, I thought it would be a good idea to show you how you basically go through the process of using this package. I can't go through everything in one simple 
video, but I'm going to take you through now how you would create a project, put some footage into it, and output stuff from that. So to do that, what I'll do is to actually close down this particular project just by closing its project window. And this will take us back to this screen here. And this is the screen you'll see when you first run the package. And this gives you a little bit of information about how to use it and various tutorials you can access, and bits of advertising come up here from Avid to say, please upgrade to a later version. But that seems to be the only intrusion you have by using the free version of Avid Media Composer. As you can see, you can actually load in different uh, projects you've worked on here. I've been working on various tests, or you can go to new one. So I think we'll create um, test, let's keep the sequence, DD. There we are, and we'll create that. And we'll soon have now a nice blank project. Everything here is clearly blank. And if we just look down here, this is our uh, sequences and clips. For some reason, it hasn't put them down there. I'm stressing Avid a bit, because normally you'd be running this at least uh, uh, 19, 20, 10, 80, and I'm running it in the 720p resolution so we can all have a hope of seeing everything on, on screen, on small screens and televisions and things like that. Anyway, it set up the project for us and clearly we've got nothing in, in our bins. Everything is uh, basically empty. So you're asking, how do you get footage in? Well, what you do is you go to Tools and to the Source Browser. And the Source Browser is where you can basically find your footage. And I've got some footage here, I think, on that SSD, at least it was a second ago, Avid Tests and Test Clips. Now, it's worth saying Avid has not got fantastic support for a wide range of formats, not, not least in the full version, to be honest, and even in, in this version here. Uh, but if we look at, for example, at this clip, this is a clip which is an AVCHD file, an MTS file. If I try just to straightforward uh, link that into the... Uh, package, I'll just press link on there, you will see failed, and more significantly, it'll tell us this type of media is not supported in this version of Avid. You'd have to upgrade to the full version of Media Composer. So I'll actually cancel that, and we then get this rather worrying message. We could continue, though things seem to work. But if you're good at shooting AVCHD stuff, um, you, you've got a problem uh, if, you, if you're coming out with MTS files. More than that, though, Avid, although it does support other file formats, such as the ones I, I've got here, things like MP4 and, and, and uh, most types of uh, QuickTime of, of MOV file, it does like to have transcoded footage. It's a very traditional video editor. It works natively internally in a format called DNX HD, and it would rather all the footage it was working in was in DNX HD to actually work best. So what I'm going to do here is to select a couple of clips, a couple of uh, QuickTime clips, and rather than linking them through to the package, I'm going to import them, which means they're going to be transcoded for use by the package. This is a pain to do, but we do get Avid for free, I guess, uh, and it does mean we'll get a much better editing experience. I know these are 720p clips, and they're at 25 frames a second, so I'll set that. And we now need to pick up the format it's going to transcode them into. And as you can see, there's a range of DNX HD formats there, all of these are intra-frame formats. It codes every frame individually. It doesn't want to run of frames just with the differences. That's why it's so much easier to work in these formats compared to things like, say, uh, AVCHD. I'm going to pick, uh, I think that should be fine for us, and um, everything's set up. We'll put the shots into the clips bin, not the sequences bin, and if I click Import, it will get on encoding the files. And uh, there we are, everything is transcoded, so we can close down the source browser. And if we look under our clips bin, and if we flick it through to have a more normal display, uh, you can see we've got a couple of uh, files there. If I click the first one, it will appear in the source monitor, and we can play it through. That works perfectly well, and we can obviously scrub through. And I think I'll set the in point fairly close to the, the in point, might be there. Uh, but we'll go through, I think it stops moving now, so I'm going to do a nice transition on the, when it's still moving, maybe about there, we'll set as the out point, and we can now drag that down to the timeline, and of course it will now play on the timeline and come up in the uh, record monitor. That works perfectly well. Nice, of course, to have an extra clip there as well, and anyway, only one clip's not that exciting. Two's not amazing, but it gives us a bit to play with. Here's the second clip. And again, that plays, that's actually moving fairly early on, but we'll go about there, I think. We'll put that maybe a little bit further as the in point, and we'll let it go on to about there and set that as the out point and take that down to the timeline as well. And so now we've got everything down here. You can scale your timeline with the uh, controls down here if you need to. But if I just play this, you should see it plays perfectly well, one clip and obviously the other. 
Now you might want to add all sorts of transitions. And as I showed you earlier, you've got loads of transitions and things sitting up here. But to be honest, most of the things you need are actually covered by this little button here, the quick transition button. So if we put our uh, marker just between the clips, and I'm gonna click here on quick transition, and you'll see it'll do centered on the cutter transition. Let's make it slightly bigger. Will it take say 35 frames? It will, and we'll add that in. And you'll see it appears on the timeline. And if we play that through, there is now a transition between our clips, which is very nice. And it's done it on the audio and also on the video, which is rather good of it. If you're thinking, can we play this full screen? We can have a look. We can go to uh, Windows and Workspaces. You can set all sorts of different workspaces up and save them yourself. One of this full screen playback, and uh, we just press the space bar. We can play this through. It's working, it's not absolutely perfect resolution, but it's actually showing us what's going on in terms of a preview. If I click there, get back to normal viewing. Finally, of course, you want to take your fantastic creation and turn it into a final film. To do that, you go to File and Publish To, and we could go to, say, Local Drive. Now, as you probably saw there, you could also go out to YouTube. You could just click on YouTube, log in, and go straight out to YouTube. But I would normally, I would always actually go to a Local Drive and actually create a file. And here you can pick your file format. Well, to be honest, you can't really, because you can pick QuickTime, QuickTime, or QuickTime. It's the only thing you can use as your file output format in Avid Media Composer first. And the codecs you can pick inside QuickTime. Remember, QuickTime and MOV files are not formats. For a QuickTime is a container, a MOV file is a container. You can have lots of different formats inside it. But the two you can use here are either H.264 or uh, DNX HD. So here, I think I'll pick DNX HD. You'll see it's defaulted the size to a, a 720p um, raster size. You can do it at 1080p if you use 1080p footage, but I haven't here. We'll call this uh, test DD. It's actually done that for us, which is rather nice. And we can send it out to, um, where did I send things before? Uh, test output will do, and that will be okay. Yes, this is Windows 7, but with a classic skin in case you're, you're wondering. And then we just press on okay, and it would uh, output that file. So, there you are. I've taken you through the basics of importing footage, doing a quick edit, adding a transition, and exporting a file using Avid Media Composer first. Avid Media Composer First presents a great opportunity for anybody who wants to learn or experiment with the industry-leading video editor. Now, of course, it's not the only free version of a professional video editor. We've also got DaVinci Resolve, which I've looked at in this channel in the past, and I'll be reviewing the latest version of DaVinci Resolve, version 14, in a future video. Comparing the two, Avid Media Composer first has less features, it requires the installation of QuickTime, and you'll need to transcode consumer video formats before you can edit them. But on the other hand, Media Composer first runs well on a PC or laptop without a graphics card, and at the end of the day, it is Avid. And for many people, that will be enough to at least give it a go. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Oh,